Gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States, and Protector of Mexico. Back with you once again for episode 209 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is May 14, 2021, our 425th day living under the COVID-19 pandemic. So a couple programming notes. Been gone for a while, did you notice? Hope so. Uh, we had some business to attend to, but also in addition to that, this vlog was started out of response to the pandemic and it seems to be winding down. So we're gonna be winding down this program. Now that does not mean we're going away. The Countess and I will still be appearing just not as often. We'll be doing occasional specials, like the one just below this, of the uh, plaques to Barbary Coast of E. Clampus Vitus, or uh, the one actually is just below is our story. So you'll be seeing more things like that. The Countess still has many tales to tell, and her musical guests still have many songs to sing. So we will be continuing, just not on a regularly scheduled basis. You know, when we started this vlog, those of you who are long-term viewers might remember, we were doing it five days a week, and then we cut back to two. So we'll be doing more remote work, that sort of thing. Keep your eyes peeled. We'll definitely be having a few more things. Um, also, we are back with tours. Now, the Imperial We, not the Countess yet. At some point, yes, but not yet. And San Francisco Food Safari is also not a go because there are still some restrictions about going into interior spaces. But Amper Norton's fantastic San Francisco time machine is back. So if you've never taken the tour or perhaps have and like to would like to again, sign up uh, by either emailing EmperNortonTour at gmail.com or going to EmperNortonTour.com. Click on the book now button. It's most Saturdays, not every Saturday. There are some events coming up that we need to attend to, but most Saturdays at 11 from Union Square. It's about two and a half hours long, $30. It's a big load of fun and a lot of history too. While we're at it, thanks to our generous donors. They have made this vlog possible. We have new lighting today because of that. Hopefully it turns out well. And uh, we couldn't do it without all of you. So here's where you can make a donation and all that. Also, don't forget, like, subscribe, leave your comments down below and share. Tell your friends if they are not aware of our vlog. Well, there's about 209 episodes to watch. 209 plus, actually. So there's a lot of good history in there. Well, before we get started with today's story, because we do have a story for today, and it is San Francisco based, we would like to point out that it is Dance Like a Chicken Day, so. There you have it, Dance Like a Chicken Day. Not Walk Like an Egyptian Day, no. Dance Like a Chicken Day, I have no idea why. Anyway. So today's story is about the dish Celery Victor and its creator, Chef Victor Herzler. Celery Victor is a largely forgotten dish created by a very famous chef. Victor Herzler was the head chef at the at San Francisco's Hotel St. Francis from 1904 to 1926. Born sometime around 1875 in Strasbourg, France, and trained at Paris's Grand Hotel, Herzler's credits include being the taster for Tsar Nicholas II, chef de cuisine of King Don Carlos I of Portugal, as well as working at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City. It's there in 1904 that he would meet James Woods, who was recently hired to serve as the manager of the Hotel St. Francis, which was under construction. Slated to be the most luxurious hotel on the West Coast, Woods thought brought Herzler to San Francisco, where he would serve as the chef on opening day March 24th, 1904. 
the famously cooked breakfast at the hotel the morning of the great San Francisco earthquake on April 18, 1906 for uh, Enrico Caruso, among people. Not long after that breakfast, the hotel was destroyed by fire and was refurbished and reopened in 1907. During the reconstruction, a small wooden hotel was constructed in 90 days in nearby Union Square, where Hertzler continued to serve as chef. He would also serve meals to U.S. Army troops stationed in San Francisco after the earthquake and fire. Hertzler is considered to be the first celebrity chef and was quite flamboyant with his thick accent, perfectly manicured pointy beard and curled mustache and sporting a red fez. It's in the picture. Herzler would frequently greet celebrity guests and visiting dignitaries. He was also known for creating elaborate meals. A typical dinner menu would offer a choice of 14 cheeses, 20 clam or oyster dishes, 11 soups, 24 relishes, 17 kinds of fish, and 58 entrees from hamburger to bohemian ham, according to his Hotel St. Francis cookbook. Herzler created classics like Peach Melba, as one of the chefs credited with inventing the crab Louis, but we'll get to that story some other time. His celery victor is nearly impossible to find today and does not appear in any of the Hotel St. Francis restaurant's menus. So the recipe for celery victor from the Hotel St. Francis cookbook, Hersler's own cookbook. Wash six stalks of large celery. Make a stock with one soup hen or chicken bones and five pounds of veal bones in the usual manner with carrots, onions, bay leaves, parsley, salt, and whole pepper. Place celery in vessel and strain broth over same and boil until soft. Allow to cool the broth. When cold, press the broth out of the celery gently with the hands and place on a plate. Season with salt, fresh ground black pepper, chervil, and one quarter white wine tarragon vinegar to three quarters of olive oil. Doesn't sound very good to me, but I guess it was popular back then. And maybe I'll make it someday to see just how it is. I'm not a big fan of cooked celery, but there you go. So this is a somewhat abbreviated edition and that wraps it up for this one. So until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, be kind to one another, to one and all, a gracious good day.